Welcome back to Logic 101. I'm William Spaniel, and this lecture is on the AND operator, sometimes known as a conjunction. AND is pretty straightforward. You take two simple sentences, like I am hungry, H, and I am thirsty, T. You put a caret in between them, H and T, and you get I am hungry and I am thirsty. And what that means is that both of those simple sentences are true. It's true that I'm hungry, and it's true that I'm thirsty. It really is that simple. For the most part, AND statements are easy to find because of that AND. So here are a couple of quick examples on that. I like ducks and I'm a monkey's uncle. Well, we see an AND there, so we know that the first sentence is true, I like ducks. And we also know the second sentence is true, I am a monkey's uncle. And in the second example, I am bored of showing simple examples, and I want to move on to more complex problems. So we, again, we see an and here, which means the first half of the sentence, that I'm bored, that's true, and that I want to move on to more complex problems, also true. And speaking of more complex problems, here's some weird conjunctions that might sometimes trick you up, trip you up, but in fact work just like the standard and conjunction that we saw before. So think about this example. I am glad you enjoy Logic 101, but I am upset you did not answer last lecture's interactive question. So you should notice that there are two distinct halves of this sentence. I am glad you enjoy Logic 101 is the first half, and the second half is I am upset that you did not answer last lecture's interactive question. Instead of having an AND here, we see a BUT. Fortunately though, the BUT functions exactly in the same manner as the AND does, at least logically speaking. Now in English, we usually use the BUT to differentiate between the first half and the second half, being that the second half might be a little surprising given the first half. But at the end of the day, we still mean that both of these things are true. So if you were to say, I am glad you enjoy Logic 101 and I am upset, you did not answer last lecture's interactive question, you're still communicating the fact that both of those things are true. It's just that in English we use that but because it's a little bit more descriptive, but logically speaking, same thing. So but is an and, just in disguise. Likewise, I like cheese as well as muffins. Here we have as well as, which is an and in disguise. This could easily read, I like cheese and I like muffins. And in the third example here, I watch MMA in addition to basketball. This time, and is hiding as in addition to. So you could also write this as I watch MMA and I watch basketball. All you're doing here is you're conjoining two things to mean that both of these things are true. That's what the and is all about, logically speaking. Conventions, well, we represent this in this course using that caret or what you might think of as an exponent sign. So P exponent sign Q, P and Q. Others might use an ampersand, P ampersand Q. Some might use a dot in between the two sentences, so P and Q, P dot Q. Others might not even use anything at all. They might just stick the two letters together, so P Q just like that, and that has the and in it. We're again, though, using that caret. Name-wise, I'm going to stick with and whenever I talk about this or whenever I speak of it in logic, so P and Q is how I'll be saying it, but it's the same thing as a conjunction, right? And and conjunction mean the same thing. I'll be using both words, although I'll try to stick with and as much as possible. All right, so one last point before we wrap up here. This is the interactive question for this lecture. Think about this sentence. I will watch How I Met Your Mother and The Legend of Korra or Seinfeld. I want you to think about this for a moment. I want you to pause this lecture. I want you to go down to the comments section, and I want you to write down how you would translate this sentence, bearing in mind that this is, in fact, a compound sentence. All right, so pause the video now, and I will be back in one moment. And I am now back. So how would you translate this sentence? Well, like before, this is a trick question. So the correct answer is that you should have noted two different ways of writing this down. So the first way of writing it down is begin parentheses H and K. I'm using H to represent how I met your mother, K to represent Legend of Korra, and parentheses V, S, S representing Seinfeld. And the second way of representing this is H and begin parentheses K or S. So notice that the difference here is that in the first bullet point, I could be watching how I met your mother and Korra, or I could just be watching just Seinfeld, or I could be watching all three. And in the second bullet point, it's definitely true that I'm watching How I Met Your Mother. And in addition to that, I'm also watching Legend of Korra, or I'm watching Seinfeld, or I'm watching both. 
So the big distinction here is in the first one, I may or may not be watching How I Met Your Mother. In the second one, I definitely am watching How I Met Your Mother. So these are logically distinct sentences. And this is, again, another reason why English can be very imprecise. And when you're translating English into logic, you need to be careful and make sure that you're getting what the original writer of the sentence intended. And in this case, with an unclear sentence, you might want to ask them what they meant by that. So the lesson here is, again, be careful with the order of operations. We need to put parentheses around the first order and then let the parentheses go for when we get to the second order. And we never, ever want to use sentences that don't have parentheses around multiple operations. So writing H and K or S without any parentheses is no good at all. All right, that wraps up this time on conjunctions. And in the next video, in the next lecture, we will continue our journey through logical operators. Join me then.